fresh off their impressive two-film production of Alexandra Dumas, The Three Musketeers, producers Ilya and Alexander Sokai purchased the Superman film rights from DC in 1974, intent on creating a grand two-part epic for Warner Brothers. Spawning at the dawn of the Hollywood blockbuster, the Song Kinds wanted it to be big, ambitious and groundbreaking, envisioning a superhero motion picture unlike any before. In order to break free from the comic tone of previous incarnations and shoot the character back to more serious roots, they hired Mario Puzo, author and screenwriter of The Godfather. Puzo was instantly sold on the idea of Superman as a Greek tragedy and infused the story with religious themes and ideologies, informing the modern representation of Superman as a Christ-like figure. Hired to direct the film was the Omen's Richard Donner, who, unimpressed with the screenplay's darkness and cynicism, pulled in screenwriter Tom Mankiewicz, whose experience on three James Bond films made him the perfect candidate to put a more light-hearted, hopeful, fantastical and nostalgic spin on Pusso's story. After an exhausting casting process, unknown actor Christopher Reeve was hired for the dual role thanks to his on-screen confidence and charm. Notably, the film also managed to cast legendary Marlon Brando as Superman's father, Joel, adding an unheard of prestige to the superhero genre and solidifying the movie as something to take seriously. Superman the movie and Superman 2 went into production, not back to back, but concurrently, with both films telling a grand epic that spanned Kal-El's journey to Earth the origins of Superman, and his first encounters with Lex Luthor, General Zod, and the Phantom Zone criminals. With a $55 million budget each, close to $300 million in 2021, the movies were the most expensive in history. As a result, the legendary story was brought to life grander than ever. Enormous sets were built, bringing Krypton and Metropolis to life like never before. And new technologies were created to realistically display Superman's lexicon of abilities and, as the film's posters would declare, make audiences believe a man can fly. Superman the movie opened in cinemas in December 1978 and immediately began shattering box office records, taking $300 million worldwide, the equivalent of $1.2 in 2021, wow. it became the highest grossing movie of the year and the sixth highest of all time. Despite having shot 70% of the sequel, Donna had been pulled away from it to finish the first when production went over schedule. When it came time to resume production, he was removed from it completely, as his relationship with the Salkinds had deteriorated. Richard Lester, who directed the Salkinds' Musketeer films, came in to not only finish the film, but reshape and reshoot much of Donna's footage. Superman 2 opened between 1980 and 1981, though while the film likewise broke numerous box office records, it failed to earn as much as the first, with 180 million worldwide. The success of both films, however, spawned a lucrative franchise. 1983's Superman 3 co-starred Richard Pryor as computer hacker Gus Gorman, saw Superman split into good and evil personas, and was much more mad cap in tone, working as more of a comedic vehicle for the popular prior than a traditional Superman sequel. 1987's Superman 4 The Quest for Peace aimed to take the series back to its serious roots, with Superman fighting nuclear disarmament and Lex Luthor's villainous creation Nuclear Man. With declining budgets, the movies grew less impressive, and despite how serious the latter tried to be, simply came off cheap and corny. They were met with declining critical and commercial success. Additionally, the franchise spawned a Supergirl spin-off movie in 1984 starring Helen Slater, which saw Kara visiting Earth to fight a wicked witch, and a Superboy spin-off TV series, which ran for four seasons between 1988 and 1992, focusing on the early adventures of a young Clark Kent taking on his first missions as the Man of Steel. He was portrayed by John Newton in season one and Gerard Christopher for the remainder of the series. In 2006, an internet fan movement successfully championed Warners into allowing Richard Donner to finally complete his vision for Superman 2. Released Boy. as huh. Superman 2 The Richard Donner Cut, the film is highly regarded by fans as the better version of the film, offering a more consistent and authentic follow-up to the first. In the comics, Superman
Sugarland's popularity had diminished over time. By the 70s, he'd become so overpowered that writers struggled to find exciting stories for him with real oh, stakes. Yeah, yeah. More existential, character-driven stories were introduced, and religious symbology became more heavy-handed. Superman's popularity was soon overshadowed by that of Batman, who in large part due to Tim Burton's 1989 Batman, Batman and its 1992 sequel Batman Returns, soon became DC's coolest and most popular character. In order to combat Superman's decline, writer John Byrne was tasked with reinvigorating him in 1986's six-part limited series Man of Steel. I could...